Hello, and welcome to The Thread. This is a podcast about my knitwear design journey, all the things that happened to me knitting on the side, and whatever other nerdy tangent I may or may not feel like skipping down this week. My name is Nicole. I'm the nerdy knitwear designer behind Common Thread Fiber. I'll put all those links in the down bar. And this week, I'm jumping on this mood board trend. I'm not entirely sure who started it. I know it was not me, uh, but I've seen multiple different podcasters do their versions of this. Some of them go more, you know, wardrobe staples. Some of them are taking a more seasonal approach. Personally, I really like the seasonal approach. So I'm going to jump on this trend. We are going to go through my knitting mood board for fall. And if that sounds good to you, let's talk about Hobbit Girl Autumn. <laughs> It should be absolutely no surprise to returning viewers that, of course, I went Lord of the Rings with this. Uh, for new viewers, it's just learn it quickly. I am a Lord of the Rings aficionado, lover, buff, nerd. Absolutely. That's the Shire. That's the Lord of the Rings box set that's illustrated by Alan Lee. I'm wearing Thorin's key. This is Gandalf's ring. This is my... Engagement with ring and wedding ring, which actually look a surprising amount like Galadriel's ring. That was a total accident, but here we all are. So, I'm definitely a Lord of the Rings nerd, so it should not shock anybody that I went Hobbit Girl with with this vibe, if you will. If it does shock you, it's probably because I went Hobbit and not Dwarf. But anyway, so these looks definitely, how do I want to put this? Harken back to Nicole of yore, if you will. So the version of me that lived in Chicago, the version of me that lived in Indiana. Um, I do live in Florida now, so it is a little more difficult to dress this way. I I'm tired of it. I'm tired of essentially wearing glorified fishnet and, you know, having no real sense of style or self anymore. Uh, it And I wasn't just moving to Florida that did that. It was also the pandemic. Um, and my husband and I are, to quote Lady Bree, potentially making a move. So I'm definitely in a very fall mood right now, which I haven't been since we moved here. Every fall that's gone by since we moved to Florida, I've been like, don't remind me of what I'm missing. I don't want to think about it. I want to talk about it. That is not my vibe right now. I've got every apple spice, pumpkin spice, coffee spice candle humanly possible going in my house. <laughs> if Willy Wonka made nothing but pumpkin pie, that's like my house is what he would smell like, essentially. That's the vibe that I'm in. Um, and I don't know what it is, but it's it's like there's that little part of me that is getting larger and larger and larger and starting to scream at me, I'm tired of being ignored. So this is why we're going Hobbit Girl Autumn, because this is very much what's calling to me. It's what I feel like I'm missing. It's what used to be my wardrobe staples. And now my wardrobe staples are this and yoga pants. And I, it's just, for me, not acceptable. So before we get super deep into the patterns themselves, I do want to say that I went ahead and specifically chose patterns that are not explicitly Hobbit related. I wanted to show that you can include or you can get the vibe of your favorite fandom without it being spelt out in front of you. This is something I used to do a lot before I began designing and thus making designs that are explicitly connected to my favorite fandoms. Uh, this is, you know, my Stay Cozy shawl, which I've talked about at length, so I'm not gonna go into it now. That, I made a bag end version. I would find cables and think that looks like Lothorian and I would knit it, stuff like that. So I specifically went for designs that do not have Hobbit names. They do not have Hobbit descriptions. They don't have anything to do with Lord of the Rings because it's a vibe we're going for. I knit things that inspire me and it just so happens that my favorite fandoms inspire me a great deal. And that inspiration can come in non-specific ways. So here's the mood board. Now what I went ahead and did, I found uh, you know one photo that had some outfits in it, but I also wanted to add photos that didn't have knitting or didn't have any kind of clothing in them. Because for me, it's a vibe. It's less about a fit less about a specific piece of clothing and more about how you feel and how you want to feel. So someone like me, I don't tend to wear a whole lot of crop tops, at least not anymore. Now, when I lived somewhere where I could wear an A-line skirt 
and have something under a crop, I would absolutely wear, you know, a little cropped vest or I would take a cropped wrap and wrap it around so that the skirt and the crop top met. I would 100% do that. So the look that I have on this mood board is very much what I'm going for. I very much used to have that very vintage bent to my clothing. Uh, somebody read me like a book, and I think it was in college, when they said, you dress like a punk librarian. <laughs> I'm like, that's exactly what I look like. So that's what I want. I want to go back to my punk rock librarian. So I have picked five knitting patterns that I think accomplish this. Now, these are, or at least accomplish the Hobbit part, Punk is also a vibe, thank you very much. So I will bring that. <laughs> I will bring that to my looks myself. Um, but these different patterns, I feel like go very well, either long, and so I, I can wear them with pants, or I could wear them with jeans, which is when I usually don't wear crop tops. Um, they could go very well tucked into a skirt. They could go very well if I decided to crop them and then wear them over a little dress or wear them with a very, very high-waisted skirt. So that's why I chose these specific patterns. Um, they all have a very slight vintage vibe to them, um, some more than others, particularly with how the designer styled them. Um, but I'm going for texture. I'm going for you know, a little, that, that wearable amount of whimsy and, you know, just kind of like the designs that I create. It's, it's not screaming at you. It's not smacking you in the face. It's not cosplay, but it does have that, that little something, something. And for those who know, you know, so that's what I was going for. So let's start with a waistcoat which again is not something that I previously would have worn very much, particularly living in Florida. And how all I want is a freaking waistcoat. Because <laughs> again, I feel it from my like gut. I'm getting yanked north, guys. It's, it's happening. So we are going to start with the Scrumper Waistcoat by Marina Skua. Now, Marina has a podcast of her own, and she is fantastic. If you are into the calm vibe, you know, kind of podcast uh, where you get a little bit of vlog mixed in and you like spinning, <laughs> go watch Marina's podcast. Uh, she's definitely fits that bill. Um, and it's fantastic. So there isn't a whole lot in the, in the way of a description in this pattern, but I will tell you, or on the pattern page, excuse me, um, in Ravelry, but I will tell you what she gives you a ton of on the pattern page. And something I really, really appreciate is measurements. She gives you a ton of measurements on that pattern page. So I don't care that you're not telling me what the inspiration of this is or what it was supposed to. I don't care. She gives so many measurements and I'm like, Yes, that's exactly what should be happening. I love it when designers do that. So there are a ton of measurements on her pattern page. You can go check that out. So instead of telling you, you know, whatever her inspiration for this waistcoat is, I'm gonna tell you why I chose it. So I don't usually go for waistcoats. I just don't. Um, but I think that that's changing a lot. And I really love this pattern. It has got that little bit of texture. It's got that little bit of, of, you know, whimsy to it. I could see Bilbo wearing this waistcoat. <laughs> I just could. So I absolutely would knit this. I think I would probably make it cropped for myself. I know. Who is she? Returning viewers, clutch your pearls. <laughs> I have many videos where I have said blatantly, I don't do crop tops. So I think if I was wearing it with, you know, a linen skirt, or if I was, if I lived for the North, a wool skirt, yeah, I absolutely think I would wear more more crops. So I think I would crop this. Um, but I could also see myself wearing it long the way she has it and wearing it with some some jeans or, you know, I, I have these really great pair of like black. They're not slacks and they're not jeans and they're just, they're excellent. They're comfortable. I'm trying to get to the point where I can pare my wardrobe down a little bit more and have less in it, but have higher quality and rotate things a lot more, much more like a old school borderline historical way of dressing. So I, I can picture this with those pants. Um, I, I can picture this cropped. I can picture it tucked into a skirt. I can picture it, uh, you know, I, I can picture it a lot of ways. So this is the Scrumper Waistcoat by Marina Skua, the waistcoat that has changed my mind. The next pattern on my list is the Marissa Cardigan by Alexandra Solovanyuk. I hope I pronounced that as correctly as humanly possible for Uncultured American Party of One. So this is a beautiful cardigan. And of course, there are seemingly cables all over it. The way she has it styled in her photos is just 
chef's kiss. I love it so much. Um, but I will tell you, these are faux cables. So Alexandra does put a little bit of a description in her pattern page, and I'll share some of that with you. Uh, this is worked top down with raglan increases instead of bottom up with raglan decreases. The neck is shaped with short rows, and then the body is knit flat, and the sleeves are knit in the round. The button band is worked as you knit the body. I love that. I love it. I love it. I love it. Like, okay, here's the thing. I love cardigans. I absolutely love cardigans. I wear them more than pullovers. But my God, I hate knitting button bands. I hate it. I did the reluctant homeschooler and I wanted to die. That button band took me forever. It just took me forever because it was an oversized cardigan to begin with. And it was, a, uh, uh, I get, I get hives thinking about it. So knitting the button band at the same time as the body, take my money, take all my money. Just take all my money. Just direct deposit. It's <laughs> just how I feel. So I'm very excited about that. And she does say that it is fairly easy. This design is fairly easy, but it does require you to be able to follow a chart and work increased stitches in pattern. So I would say that that sounds pretty simple. It sounds like this may be a good pattern for an adventurous beginner or, an, or a, you know, someone who is ready to level up from adventurous beginner into, you know, intermediate, if you will. And I absolutely love how the designer has styled this. I love how she has it tucked into a skirt. I love that vintage look. But I can also absolutely see on those days where you don't really feel like getting all, you know, getting all dressed. You know, you just want to wear, you know, throw on either a pair of leggings or a pair of jeans and, uh, you know, t-shirt underneath it and just go about your day. I can absolutely see myself wearing this. And that's I'm just really excited about this one. And like I said, it is faux cables. So I'm not entirely sure how this faux cable is created. Um, but I don't know that I care because I'm going to do it. <laughs> that is also apparently my, my fall vibe. <laughs> Run in first, ask questions later. Right. That's a seasonal vibe for me, right? No. So this is the Mary Sicardigan by Alexandra sullivan -Yuk, which again, I really hope I didn't butcher the, her last name too terribly. Uh, uncultured American party of one. Let's move on to my third pattern on this list, which is Anne's Puffed Sleeves by Amy Schur. I do believe this pattern has made it on multiple of my pattern lists that I have shared on my channel. And to quote Rafiki from The Lion King, it is time. <laughs> it is just time. This is inspired by Anne of Green Gables, particularly the puffed sleeves that Anne dreams of having on her dress. It is vintage inspired with a modern twist it is a raglan with a delicate textured eyelet increase and a pleated shoulder detail, and the pleats open up and flow into a puff sleeve worthy of Anne's best outfit. I absolutely agree. And the one thing that was always stopping me from knitting this pattern was the cropped, the cropped nature of it, because I apparently never went any further in any of the photos on the pattern page. <laughs> Why would I look at the beautiful green of Amy's? It's just, oh, I love it. So I did actually do a thing that, a, you know, do a thing that I should have done to begin with and look at other versions just on her pattern page. I didn't have to go into the projects page. Uh, and this looks just as good cropped and uncropped. And by uncropped, I mean full length. Uncropped? <laughs> yeah. Cropped or full length. It looks good with the kind of higher neck that Amy has. And some people made it, you know, they, they didn't include that high neck. Some people made it a lower neck. I think that it looks great both ways. So this needs to be knit. This is giving me all the hobbity vibes. It's giving me everything that I want. Again, I think that make it a little longer, I would wear it with pants. Make it Amy's length, I would wear it with skirts. I just love it. So this is Anne Puff's, Anne's Puff Sleeve. And you guys know that I'm a sucker for raglans. And I just, I just love that. I love it at both lengths. Okay, so pattern number four is actually not a garment. I wanted to make sure that I had at least one pattern in here that wasn't a garment, even though I am primarily a garment knitter. Uh, I do also love knitting shawls. So this is the, again, this is a Danish word, so there's just no way on God's green earth I'm going to pronounce this correctly. Humleby shawl? Humleby? Hum whatever. It means bumblebee. It's not whatever. I wish I knew how to pronounce this word correctly. It means bumblebee in Danish. And this is from Fiber Tales. So like I said, it means bumblebee in Danish. And it is inspired by the bees waking up after a long winter to seek the first flowers of spring. 
So this shawl is a triangle textured shawl with little bees, flowers, and a field of garter stitch. It's worked bottom up in sections with written and charted instructions. You all know how much I love that. You begin with a pico cast on and then shape the shawl with the decreases along the center and outer edges. And at the end, you graft a few stitches. So it sounds like this is one that gets smaller as you go, which is exciting. Uh, and I just love the texture of this one. It just screams Hobbit to me. And I absolutely love it. Now, the one thing that I will say is that it is not quite big enough for me. This is a 21 inch depth and a 63 inch wingspan. It's close, but no cigar for me. So I would need to make this larger, which is fine. I'm sure I could look at the pattern and figure out how to add a little bit more specifically based on my gauge. Did I say specifically? I may have. Specifically based on my gauge, I can figure out how to make the shawl a little bit bigger. I think that I would want it at about 30 inch spine and a 70 inch, inch wingspan, and that would be good. That would be just fine for me. So I don't think that increasing it should be too hard, but we'll see. So this is the Humleby, Humleby, the Bumblebee Shawl by Fiber Tales. So the last pattern that I wanted to share for today is the Again, I picked nothing but patterns that I just cannot pronounce the names of. I want to call it Ruda because I play too much Zelda, but I think it might be Rauda by Anna Johanna. So this is a cardigan. Again, shocker. Your girl loves cardigans. I can't help it, which is why it's surprising to me that I don't knit more button up vests. Uh, and maybe that realization means that I will knit more button-up vests. They're just cardigans with no sleeve island. I mean, that sounds like heaven to me. Anyway, so this is a cardigan that is worked flat, top down, and of course, seamlessly. The cardigan has a round yoke and a simple lace pattern. And then the rest of the cardigan is stockinette stitch. The back neck is shaped taller with short rows after the yoke. And there are instructions for an optional bust starts. You know me, I, well... Maybe you don't. So I've started putting bus starts in everything. It's mostly been my own designs at this point because that's all I've been knitting lately. But I know that when I start working on, when I, when I give myself a break, I'm going to be putting bus starts in damn near every pattern that I knit because I need them and they make the fit much better. So I love that she actually includes instructions for optional bus starts. And she also gives a ton of measurements on her pattern page, which I love. The yarn is a sport weight for this pattern, which we, again, all know. I love sport weight yarn. And I can definitely see me knitting out of this, knitting this out of anything from Knit Picks Will of the Andes to my beloved baby cat yarn. I could see me knitting this out of just a multitude of choices, making it for anything from very budget friendly to a luxury knit for me. Uh, and that's, I think, why I really love it. It feels versatile in the actual knitting process for me. I also love that little lace pattern and it doesn't seem that like it would be a lace pattern that I would, um, how do I put this gently, suck at. <laughs> so I am uniquely terrible at lace. I don't know what it is. I'm trying to get over it. I'm trying to get better at it. And I think this would be a great pattern to practice that with. So this is the Rauda, Ruda, not sure, but I'll, <laughs> you'll see it typed out by Anna Johanna. So that is five patterns that I think absolutely hit my Hobbit girl autumn vibe directly on the head. Uh, I think these are also patterns that I would take into winter and some of them even spring because I don't think cables are just for cold winter, uh, cold weather. I don't. I love texture. I love cables. Uh, there were a lot of cables um, in this on this list, but there was also some lace. The last pattern had lace. Uh, the Anne's Puff Sleeves has a little bit of lace, it has eyelets. So I'm very excited about these patterns and I'm very excited about this calling that I'm feeling that's, you know, trying to bring me home a little bit, you know, come back, come back to yourself. That's what I'm feeling very much at the moment, which is why there is a sixth bonus pattern that I'm not actually going to talk a whole lot about, but I will give you a sneaky peek. It is one of my own and it... <laughs> It's probably one of my favorite things that I have knit to date, to be honest. Uh, I absolutely loved knitting this pattern, but I'm not going to talk too much about it here. If you would like to hear more about it, 
you can join my YouTube memberships. I talk at length about this pattern on my last in-betweener, uh, and I will talk even more about it next week, and I will share FO photos there. Uh, and I may or may not share this on the podcast. I don't really know. Um, I think I'm going to take a lot of my whips off of the main channel and put them onto my in-betweeners instead. Uh, and this is a move I'm debating making because when I share videos of my whips or my designs, they don't seem to be resonating as much with y'all, but the topical episodes do. So that's why I'm considering that move. That way I'm giving you guys, you know, something I enjoy doing. I love doing these topical episodes. What used to be called the tangents when I uploaded weekly. Uh, I love my tangent episodes and you guys seem to enjoy them more. So I wanna make sure that I'm giving you guys the content that you want. Um, so I think I might take my whips and a lot of my design process and put it over on my membership instead. So if you like that uh, and you wanna see more of that, feel free to join my YouTube memberships. There's lots of different tiers with lots of different uh, different perks, anywhere from exclusive video content to access to our Discord server, to a shout out at the end of public episodes, which reminds me, my girl Marissa, thank you so much for being a ride or die. You mean the world to me uh, and your support means the world to me, truly. Uh, so <laughs> thank you so much. And I think I'm going to end on that note. What do you guys think about these patterns? Tell me in the comments. Uh, what patterns give you all the Hobbit vibes uh, that I didn't include? That's what I want. Put it in the comments if you have any ideas. And on that note, I'm going to head out. I hope you guys are having a great weekend. I hope you continue to have a great weekend. And I will talk to you in two weeks, right? Every other week? Is that two weeks? Whatever. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.